Good evening. I hope you're doing well today. Hope you're having a fantastic week so far. Happy Wednesday. What day? Yeah, let's see. It is, what, May the 29th, I think? Yeah, May 29th, 2024. It is a rainy and sunny day here in Terrence, British Columbia, which is pretty common at this time of year. It is kind of cool, but it's okay. Uh, otherwise... Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I hope you're having a fantastic week. I said that already. Sorry, I'm repeating myself. <clears throat> but thank you for tuning in. It is truly appreciated. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, thank you for taking the time out of your day to to watch this, to hopefully learn something. And yeah, thank you. So we are going to get started. Uh, there's a couple things that I want to show you. First thing, I have been working on the Iranians, and some good news is that I have the platoon file done. I have all the organizations done, with the exception of adding in the unique IDs for some of these things. So, that's good. Uh, the graphics are also done, at least temporary graphics. Uh, I will need to add some, change some of the graphics just to make sure that they're all legit and stuff, but uh, I will have to go through... There's, I think, a handful, like here, for example, the Gaz 69s. I need to add those properly, and I'm going to borrow them temporarily from the Iraqis <coughs> until I can do a new paint job on the units, but at least the units are going to be there. Hey, Tim. Hey, John. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Um, so, yeah, I have been working really hard on the Iranians. I'm quite pleased with the progress so far. They are coming along very well. Um, maybe in a couple weeks they'll be totally done, at least for playtesting. Uh, then I will focus my attention to the Iraqis. So the Iraqis, I have to, I have completed the weapons files for both the regular army and the Republican Guard. I have to assign graphics to them yet. Now, fortunately, Iraq already has a number of graphics already, but there are a whack load of new units that I need to be adding things to. So I will grab some of these units. Like there's new vehicles, there's new artillery pieces. But again, most of them I can grab from Middle East or Vietnam, depending on the nation that it's coming from. Um, yeah, so anyways, with the Iraqis, the platoon file is done, the weapon file is done, I do have to assign graphics, and then I have to populate with all these new platoon IDs into the brand new organizations that I made for Iraq that cover from 1948 to 1985, and yes, they are as historical as I can make them, as opposed to before, if you look in your CSME Middle East organizational editor, it's very generic. <clears throat> but now, with this update, not not this coming update, um, but a update, you will have historical Iran and Iraq to use for scenario building, which is crazy exciting. Um, the other thing, just a reminder for the update process, you can expect to see probably the second week of June. So we're under a new team at Matrix Games and they have a different process for how uh, updates are released. Probably the second week of June you will have the opportunity to play test the beta and they will leave it live for a couple of weeks and if there's no major issues it'll be properly released at the end of... I guess when will that be? The end of... end of June, maybe beginning July depending on their schedule. It'll depend also on their on their side too. So we're pretty much good to go for that, and I'm kind of excited about that. That'll be nice to get this out for you guys. Uh, the other thing I've been doing still is I have been working on these markers, uh, basically filling in the information here. Again, going through the Warsaw Pact as well. And I just changed some things here. Now we might be changing how this... this uh, this whole BMP is going to be laid out. This is temporary. We are talking about removing, or not necessarily removing, but utilizing these for right now. I think they're just flags. Flags and mostly blank. Let's see. I'll show you. Yeah, so these are flags and mostly blank. 
I would like to have those for something else and we can hopefully utilize these in a separate graphic for each nation so that way it's simple that way we have a, a master silhouette list now this is the old one fair don't look at that that's that's old you can tell but here's going to be the new one and yeah so hey rising thanks for tuning in good to see you i hope you're doing well today so yeah we are making really good progress and then the other thing i want to show you but this Fair warning is going to be for the 2.4 and 1.4 versions of the campaign series and campaign series or campaign series Vietnam and Middle East, which won't be out until probably around Christmas, just late fall around Christmas, somewhere in there. So before we do that, let's get into the mod enabler and we'll see if this works. Positive vibes that it does. I don't know if it's going to. I haven't tried it. John has tried it. Hey, Ginger, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having an awesome day. Yay, yeah, ads not. Sorry. Uh, so, we're going to close or add this. This is the new thingamadee. So, John said that it works. Positive vibes that it actually does. Fingers crossed. So, I'm going to launch the game. And is it going to work? No, nope, it's still the old one. Is this not the right one? Hang on, let me check. No, that's right. Is this the right one? Hmm. Where's Middle East? Sorry, one second. I'm kind of wondering why that didn't work. Or do I just launch it straight from... Maybe if I just launch it. Oh, let's see. Did he change this whole thing? Is there a CS launch? Oh, there's no... Oh, yeah, there is. Oh, no, it's there. Okay, let's try. Let's, let's run it as administrator. See... Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted to show you. Right there. Yay, it worked. So we can't resize that. But you can, I think, organize these however you want. Yeah, there you go. So you can switch it by date. You can move this around. You can change this around. So you can't resize it. Can I? No, yeah. Can't resize it. But you have a lot of flexibility inside of here of how you want it to display. What's important to you. And again, you can sort it however you want super easy so this is all petri petri is rebuilding the front end and i think that is absolutely fantastic um so here we can turn off the the splash screen and all that fun stuff there is also the regular uh how you want the play modes how you want to play either play by email hot seat lion host lion keller i can't wait to use those <coughs> Uh, yeah, so there are some options and things. We are working on this. This might be a little small, so that might be something we have to consider. Maybe get them to, to rebuild it to a larger size, or maybe have the font a little bit bigger, or maybe reduce this size. I don't know. Anyways, so this is this is really cool. I'm very excited about this. I'm very happy. I'm going to organize things by file name, because that will organize it usually by date as well, depending on where you are. Launch straight as an admin. Yeah, I see that there, John. Thanks thanks for the, the heads up. Now I know that it works. And it's looking really good. I, I think it, it, it is looking really good. I'm kind of happy about that. So, uh, we are going to play a scenario. This one. I think it's going to launch. I'm not sure. But I think so. So I'm going to pick that one. Oh yeah, this is something new here too. So the complexity has a, re, a relationship now, so you can understand the size of of you, or scenario that you're going to be playing. So, for example, if it's a complexity six, well, then there's a division probably involved. If it's seven, there's multiple divisions, and you know, brigades or battalions or regiments or division. Yeah. Anyways, this gives you an idea what's going to be involved. There are a couple super big ones, I think. 
yeah, armies plus, so that it tells you how many units are here. So in this map, there's 945 units. Uh, I like the big ones. I like the big ones. I really want to play someone this, because it'll be so much fun. Hey, infantryman, good to see you. So anyways, this, or a version of this, this is the beta version, obviously. Um, a version of this will be available for you come around Christmas. Uh, late fall-ish, somewhere in idea. I, I think this is fantastic. I like it. It's a good start. It's a really good start. Compared to what it used to be, it's a night and day difference. I love it. All right, we are going to play a scenario. Uh, where is it? I had it. This one. Rear guard at Jebel Libni. After the affair at Ber... Lafan, pardon my butchering. Two Israeli brigades continue their advance towards the Egyptian defensive position at the dominant terrain feature along the route, Jebel Libni. Uh, the lead elements of the brigade came under tank fire as it approached the mine defenses and prepared to frontally assault the position. One of the Israeli brigades advancing along the Abu Agalia Highway from the east engaged the defenses south of Jebel Libni. Jebel means mountain, just as an FYI in, uh, I presume, Arabic? I don't know. But it means mountain. Uh, elements of the Egyptian 3rd Infantry Division were entrenched behind minefields around the crossroads at Jebel Libni, and I'm probably butchering that, uh, supported by tanks and artillery. The battle began at dusk and continued throughout the night, the Egyptians losing a number of tanks in the rearguard action that allowed the rest of the division to escape after receiving orders to return to the canal. Now, typically this would be playing head-to-head, -head, but I, a reason why I'm playing this one is because I need to understand when I'm scripting it because I wanted to be able to play solo player, how the Egyptians are going to respond to my attacks and how I'm going to utilize rear guards while the rest of the units are being withdrawn. So that's a scripting challenge that I'm going to have to figure out, which I think is going to be kind of fun to figure that out. So hopefully we're going to get this rocking. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Maybe we're not. Maybe this is the preview. Oh, no, it did. All right. So, I'm going to play as the Israelis. We're playing with Fog of War because that's just how you should be playing. No, I'm not playing this. This is designed as head-to-head, -head, but I want to make it so that you can play against the, against the computer. So the reason I'm playing this again, just to reiterate, is that I want to understand, one, how the Israelis are going to attack, and then how the, the Egyptians can generally respond, and how I can script a fighting withdrawal. Because... If we look at the map, so I get a bunch of goodies. We're being so this is Jebel Libni, it's a mountain. Anyways, so here's the main Egyptian position right here. Let's turn on some labels. Uh, it's basically in the bottom of a wadi, large massive wadi between a couple of mountain ranges. But the most important element is this. The computer won't know what to do with this, but both sides here have eject exit objectives which means that both sides are going to be wanting to run towards this location in order to exit the units from from here so as you notice john you had this question before notice that they're separate you can't use exit objectives i can't i can't use this exit objective i can't yeah except because they're egyptian right and just like the egyptians can't use my exit objectives i don't know what the values are and I won't know what the value of our, uh, values are, just for the simple reason that it's Fog of War. These units here are what they're worth to me. I don't know what they're worth to the Egyptians. we That's one, probably one thing that I'm going to figure out. And after it's scripted, as, as usual, you'll gain points for having a collection of things, for example. Maybe here we'll call this the crossroads in the, in the Lua file, and you'll get 500 points for holding that, or capturing it for like and holding it for five turns or something. So yeah, exciting times. Anyways, so our objective here in this scenario generally is to advance down the roads, clear this area, 
and get the heck out of Dodge in the west and head towards the canal. This is 1967, so we are probably a tank-heavy force, but on the bright side, we do have some good tanks. We have some shot meteors, which are centurions. And we do have some mechanized infantry, which is also a good thing. Mechanized infantry, mechanized infantry. Now, I wish I had these tanks in my the crossroads battle that I'm fighting it out with Javi right now. Holy crap, you have no idea how rough that is. I can't even express how rough that is. We do have reconnaissance vehicles. I will utilize them as much as I can. These are all meteors, unfortunately, which means they're not going to be the best, which means basically I need to run down this road to have the most effective movement. On the bright side, it is mostly open desert by the looks of it. So, our movement might not be terrible. Let's just take a look. Let's select one of these tanks. Let's highlight movement. It's not, I mean, it's way better on the road, obviously, but it's not bad off-road. So, you know what? Let's take this force up here and go on a flanking expedition. What's this? Some armored infantry. Alright, and here I'm sure we're going to find the bad guys. Oh, jeez. So, we found the bad guys, just like that. Bada boom. Uh, the code, yeah. The code is in Lua just for the scripting part. The, the engine code is in C++. So, there's two codes. There's a legacy code, and then there's a scripted code. The scripted code, if you notice in Vietnam, is significantly better than the legacy code in Middle East. So when you're playing a Vietnam scenario, you can expect a way different experience playing Factorio that uses Lua. Yeah, Lua is a really powerful thing. So, we obviously have a problem. We have a massive anti-tank on there. What is that, probably? Is that an 85 or a 100? I'm gonna guess an 85. But we uh, lost our reconnaissance, so that sucks. So the description said that this is... Oh, look at that. We can even tell that it's in a bunker. Which means... This is a fortified line, probably around you know around this hill around these little knolls there plus this hill i don't know how far up the defenses go but we're gonna have to do a frontal assault if we're gonna use this highway that part sucks because i don't know what kind of reinforcements i'm getting i think we get quite a few reinforcements because this is a larger scenario but i think they come on piecemeal so that's what i have to figure out is how i'm going to do this I wish I had some artillery. beautiful tanks. So we'll cut through these guys like butter, especially since I think our tank have a relatively flat trajectory. Yeah, look at that. They have a really flat trajectory relatively out to distance because that's what how they were trained, right? So if you were to compare, for example, like the English, 
or even the Jordanians, the Jordanians uh, tanks, you would see that they're not as flat. The trajectory isn't as flat as that. So these are actually very powerful tanks. And they have a decent armor on them too. They have a really good strong frontal armor and whatnot. Does it tell us what it is? Anywhere? Anywhere? Yes, 38 frontal armor. So as long as we keep our front to whatever we're going to be faced against, we should be okay. Generally. Not always. Alright. I think that's all we're going to do. So let's save this. Jebel Libni. Or Libni. And let's see what happens. Actually, wait. Let's zoom in. And then let's see what happens. So most of these... The Egyptians typically will start off um, fixed because they actually did put up a fight until they were all ordered to leave. So that's what's going to happen. We'll probably be fighting fighting them for a bit and then I don't know how the AI is going to handle time to retreat. I don't think they will because I don't think the legacy AI understands that. But that will be scripted. Reinforcements have arrived. We have nine airstrikes remaining. We have four headquarters unable to provide supply. I'm very excited to start working on scenarios for um, the Iran-Iraq War. I think that'll be really exciting. Again, we're just flanking with these, these, this small task force. It's not huge, which means I wonder: Do I? Uh, since this is going to be a brutal fight, do I just send more units this way to try and flank? You know what? I might do that. What do we got here? Cordless rifles. Let's send this tank company over here too. Why not? We don't know what's up here, but we're going to find out. Okay, let's get a little closer to this bunker. Hopefully, we can start taking it out. I have... I can move one more. It will get smaller if you're not careful. Right. Oh no! What's that? That's a T-54, probably. Oh, it's a one... Okay, so that's, that is likely a command vehicle. That is no longer our problem. Move up the road. Ah, freaking fire truck. Okay, so we need to go slow time. There must be a roadblock here because I can't move anymore. Do you use up all your action points or save some most of the time? It depends on what I'm doing. As I'm getting closer to an advance, or as I'm advancing, I will usually burn through all my action points. But if I'm in a fight with someone, I might leave at least one shot. Because the opportunity fire, typically in my un unproven experience, usually will give you more casualties than if you direct fire yourself. Not always, but that seems to be my luck. So, for example, in my game right now that I'm playing against Javi, he's basically defending a line, and he has left all of his units with Opportunity Fire, with the exception of maybe a handful out of, you know, a division-sized unit. And me advancing towards that is brutal. There's very rarely a time when I'm not losing at least half a squad or a full squad due to opportunity fire throughout the front line. It, it's just crazy how much I'm losing. But on the other hand, since he's doing that, it allows me the opportunity to maneuver around him. So for me, it's bad and good. I'm taking a lot of casualties, but I'm slowly working into where I need to go. You'll have to watch that battle when I'm done. It is 
such an intense battle. I haven't had an intense battle like that in a long time. I'm playing as the Israelis, and he's playing as the Jordanians. And holy crap, it's just crazy. So, do I have any engineers by any chance? I don't. That's awesome. I'm going to just start pummeling this area with... I'm also going to start moving, sliding down along this edge here. That keeps me out of line of sight because I'm on the other side. Oh, I do have reconnaissance. Let's see if I can see anything. No, I do have one more try. Let's try. Oh, actually, let's check our distance. Yeah, we might just, yeah, we're not, we're too far away. So, let's continue. We'll send the tanks up top. I'm not worried about losing tanks. Although, if the tanks are sitting up here, with T-54s, if you're closer than a kilometer, then you're in the kill zone. For you, you, you will lose tanks. But if you're beyond that, you're usually safe against T-54s. T-62s, I've noticed that it's typically... Uh, maybe 1,500 meters... But that's, that's pushing it at about 1,500 meters. But for T-54, it's... Oh, for crap's sake, really? More mines. So there's obviously a minefield here. Thanks, Tips. I know. Oh, there's new uh, icons for those that are interested in those things that you can use. So since we're going to be doing a frontal assault, I don't know where the line is. I have to be careful. I'm going to assume it's somewhere in here or up in here. We haven't got shot at, so it's probably not that far. But next turn, I'm going to maybe advance to and unload and start creeping up to see if we can find a hole in the line. T-64 is about five sexes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to assume that there's probably a line in here. Let's... Can we do a recon? Let's do some recon. Let's take a look. How far are we seeing? Uh, we're probably not close enough. Let's go up a couple more hexes. Let's do another recon. Because I'm nervous as heck. Nothing yet. One more recon here. Nothing. Okay, so we should be safe. Let's turn that off. Sorry about that. Again, we want to get our tanks up and leave with our tanks because they will soak up the shots. My half-tracks will not soak up shots. I'm so glad that this is a paved road. I don't know if you remember the scenario where we were playing against point one oh nine or something like that. And uh, it was painful going along these tracks. Two hexes, three hexes. It was just brutal. So I'm really grateful that we have a paved road here to work with. But don't forget, we need to push through. We need to go through all this crap that's going to be in here. And likely, it's not going to run away. So there's probably going to be a defense down here. There's going to be a defense in here. Plus, we have to break through this line. I don't know if there's more than one, and I don't know how far it goes. Uh, tanks, so we have to wait a turn. These guys are moving. All right, let's save it, end it, see what happens. Ah, crap, we lost the tank. Another anti-tank gun. Darn it. Oh, whatever it was, we reduced it. Ah, 
gonna borrow this rifle. Crap. Did we lose another tank? No, just retreated. That's good. Oh, that's interesting. I haven't heard sound effects in forever. How fun is that? Reinforcements have arrived. We have nine airstrikes remaining. We have one unit out of one that has uh, recovered. Five headquarters unable to provide supply. Two units low on ammo. I love the supply vehicles. And certain scenarios have supply missions, which is awesome. A lot of, a lot of scenarios in Vietnam, if you have a supply unit, it means something. So if it, if you take a loss then you will um, re have a reduction in supply as well. You'll have a reduction in ammo, artillery ammo, flares, and smoke, depending on the scenario that you're in, if you have any of those. All right, let's continue slow time a little bit. Again, I don't know where the line is. Oh, there are tanks here. What are we going to do? Or anti-tank guns. Oh, shit, there's more tanks there. I should have known that. Okay, we need to pull this tank back because that is a company command tank. And now I've just exposed my rear to it. Perfect. Please note my sarcasm. Oh, good. Now I can shoot its rear. Do I have one more shot? Nice. Alright, see. Now these have really high hard attack, attack, but they don't have very good soft attack. See, look at that. We're shooting two. So 17 each. Oh, we got lucky. No joy. And this guy. So, based on how... Oh, look at that. So we can see where the line is here now. We can see that it's going to be cutting across this area here. I'm not going to move any closer with these. But I'm going to move with my infantry. Let's unload these guys. Oh, frick, there's a headquarters there. That's not what I wanted to do. Move these out of the way. Let's move this guy up here. Uh, I think if John is asking, unlike a human player, do you notice that the AI still fires at the closest enemy unit? It seemed that way in JTS, just curious. Um, yes, it, it will fire. It'll either fire at the closest unit, or it'll fire at a high priority unit. High priority unit will be, for example, a headquarters, or an engineer, or something like that. Something that's flagged with a high priority. Or supply vehicles, for example. In this case, we don't have supply vehicles. That'll be something that I add to this scenario, just to make it a little more fun and interesting. Um, but otherwise, yeah. So this here targeted the Jeep in the back because it was a soft target, and that was a priority for these recordless rifles because it kills soft targets totally. That's what it's good for. But if you get too close, like these tanks, they'll probably take a couple of hits. I don't know if it'll... If I'm not, I'm not close enough to be destroyed, I don't think, by the recordless rifles. I totally am by the anti-tank guns, obviously, because we've already lost a tank or two. And there's probably more tanks in here or somewhere on this line because that was four tanks that we found, three that we killed. There has to be at least two more platoons somewhere. I just don't know where they are. 
There's trenches here, trenches here, trenches here. I don't know. I'm going to assume this is all infantry or machine guns or something. There's a, that looks like a light machine gun down there. So that's something to keep in mind. I don't know if there's anti-tank, so I have to be very cautious about my vehicles here. But yeah, generally speaking, they will fire at, uh, at the closest unit or something of high priority. Infantryman is saying, so in Vietnam, can you have a headquarters and a supply vehicle? Yes, definitely. In most cases, there is, uh, for example, with a brigade-sized unit or even a battalion unit, one of the companies that are included with that will be a logistics company. So that will have a couple of supply vehicles, maybe supply caches, plus some ARVs maybe, or something like that, or dozers maybe. It, it depends on the organization, but yeah, you'll have headquarters. Plus supply units. The supply units will act differently than headquarters unless, it's a, unless it is a specific type of supply. But in all my scenarios that I designed, the supplies are designed for uh, a victory point value as well as a trigger within the lure script. So if you lose a supply unit, if it's by artillery or by an assault or by whatever, the opponent gains a lot of points for it, plus they gain supply, and you lose supply. So there's a there's headquarters that doesn't really matter that way because it's going to absolutely destroy your your supply situation anyways. But the supply elements... Ah, crap. How, what did you hear? I can repeat. That's okay. So we know the line is down here, so I don't have to go... Ah, uh, no, let's just keep on trucking. I, I think that's a good, yeah, I think we're going, we're going to send this group down, down around this wadi area here, and then this group, we're going to go all the way towards this, uh, this watering hole, basically. That's our plan. And see if we can get up onto the hill, maybe see something, or see if the line extends all the way there. And if not, we might just go raiding, or at least cut off the escape route for the Egyptians. Again, it's it's not scripted. I don't think they will actually go towards the objective points back here, but either way, it'll be a fun fight. Watch my left flank with that group. Yeah, I don't know what's out here at all, but I'm thinking positive. You know me, positive. Oh yeah, check this out. Ah, uh, how do I do that? See? Positive. <laughs> I'm sure you all know who that is. In chat, I mean. So I'm going to leave my vehicles, my soft vehicles, out of line of sight of that blasted cordless rifle until I deal with it. I do have some mortars. Let's... Oops. Let's fire with them. We're going to hit these. We're going to hit that. We have our reinforcements. Oh, paved roads. It's... <laughs> It's the cat's meow. Holy. Love it. Just another infantry company. Are they parachutists? No, they're just armored infantry. Yes, they can. I absolutely agree. So there's another line here somewhere. I don't know where it is. Let's advance a kilometer. Oh, never mind. We found it. We found it the hard way. All right, let's bring our tanks up. Now, this is a little more interesting area because there's a lot of dunes. It's really hard to see here. As you see, the dunes will block line of sight. So 
we're going to be in way better positions here, or not in better positions here, to be ambushed. Not only that, this part here is all sand, so maneuvering is going to suck. That being said, let's see, wait, before I say anything. That being said, I might flank the dunes, at least on this side, because it's open terrain here. But I don't know what's up on this hill. I don't know if there's anything there. So let's let's go exploring. And I'm gonna break out some infantry. And we'll do a combat team, a couple of combat teams. Just so we can start probing and seeing what's there. While these tanks up here will do a flanking maneuver. And we'll give them some infantry. We also have a 120 millimeter mortar. We'll leave those back there. designed the scenario so I bet it gets worse than dunes. Yeah, I designed the scenario, but I designed the scenario like 10 years ago. I don't remember at all. So we're going to do a tank infantry team going down the road. These tanks and infantry are going to flank and see what's back there. Hopefully we can kill this so we don't have to worry about losing our crap. And then we have another infantry company coming up. So that's good. Do we have more reinforcements? We do. Whack load of stuff. What do we have? Way more tanks. Lots more tanks. So the Israelis were very tank heavy in 67. Oh, but we have a lot of infantry. Oh, look at that. We have some engineer tanks. Perfect. That'll help clean up our stuff. So maybe I'll hold off a little bit. Start this line. Or start reconning this line while the rest of the force comes up and then we can uh, push our way through. I think that might be a, a smarter idea than me just beating my head over the uh, the line. We're only three turns in so there's still time. So the thing is that with this scenario I will be collecting more points, right? Or not more points, um, more units throughout. It is a larger scenario I think. I think I have, I don't remember if it was a division in total. Ah, crap, you see? There we go. Freaking recoilless rifles, they're the worst. Fingers crossed. Ah, we got disrupted. That's better than a loss. At least they're missing now. Oh, I see. Interesting. They picked on the infantry. So that might... Is that the same size gun? Maybe I'm just out of range. Nope. <laughs> I lied. Unless there's a... Unless there's a recordless rifle in there or something. Yeah, there must be a recoilless rifle in there that was hitting my infantry that we can't spot. It is a bunker. Oh, are they abandoning the position? Well, that's interesting. Alright, nine airstrikes remaining. We have two out of three units that have recovered morale. Three headquarters unable to provide supply. Five units low on ammo. Ah, oh, we reduced the recordless rifle. Thank goodness. Just 
There was infantry in there. I don't know if it's still there. All right, let's get a little closer. See what else we trigger. Oh, I think there's a roadblock there. Oh, and look at that. We spotted some positions. So again, I need engineers, and I don't have them. Ooh, reduced it by one. Let's send this up and around too. Ah, yeah, it is totally a roadblock. So I'm going to assume there's going to be minefields around here as well. I'm going to leave these back here. Let's move these up just a little bit. Now, if I was playing against the human and I was the Egyptians, I would absolutely target all these half-tracks. If I can see them, I'm going to kill them. Even if I lose this gun... Killing the points for the half-tracks, especially if they're loaded, that's what I'm going to target. I wouldn't care about these tanks. I would target the half-tracks. Anything light that I can kill is going to weaken your your overall power, which means that if you have unsupported tanks coming up here or further into here, you're going to have a hell of a time. So that's a benefit to me, not so much to whoever I'm playing. Uh, let's start softening this up. Hmm. I have lots of lots of goodies back here, but but nothing totally useful yet. I think we have tanks. Oh, yeah. Okay, since we noticed that we had a whole bunch of good stuff coming, let's organize that. How far can these Shermans move? Ah, not very far. Boo! So the other thing that is really useful in this scenario, or, or going to be useful, are these ARVs. So with the ARVs, they are able to remove wrecks. And that's what I'm going to need to keep these roads clear. So we have the Shermans to clear the minefields and the blocks. And we have the ARVs to clear the road of wrecks to keep them open and useful. So this sucks. There's a... Uh, a long line of guys here. Nice. We have a lot of recon assets here. Ah, uh, the tanks are slow. So we're not going to get too far ahead of the tanks, though, because safety first. In the meantime, let's just sit here and try and take out these weapons. Oh, got one. Oh, joy. and just move a little closer. I'll keep on hitting the... Eh. 
man. That sucks. Oh, this is risky. Risky, risky, risky. No joy. Look at that. The soft attack value on these things is, is not very good. So, unfortunately, it's killing us. Alright. We need to take out that recordless rifle before it takes us out. And let's move this a little bit closer and see. Can we see that thing? Shoot, we must be just out of line of sight. That's too bad. All right. On the bright side, we've given them a lot of targets to choose. We'll bring these light vehicles down here just because maybe they'll be more supportive. Let's unload those. Maybe we can get a shot off at that. That's done, that's done. This is also done. Our reinforcements are done. Do we have any more reinforcements? We do not. All right. Flank in the line. Let's see how it goes. Oh, they've got artillery. Oh, they're using smoke. Thank you. crossed. This is close. This is going to be close. Ouch. Welcome back, Tim. Good to see you. Oh, what's that? Oh, another recordless rifle. Shoot. Tank T-54 back here. quite the line that we have to push through. And it goes up the hill. So much for my flank. rifle in a bunker too or maybe that's a anti-tank gun I don't know
No effect, at least. Except running away. Ah, oh, we took a loss. Boo. I'm noticing that we get flares. I'm going to assume there's going to be some night action. Reinforcements have arrived. We have nine airstrikes remaining. We have one out of two units that have uh, recovered. Morale. Two headquarters unable to provide supply. One artillery unit unavailable. And one unit low on ammo. Come on. Good hit. Oh, we reduced the pain in the bum by two. Ah, oh, that's it, eh? Okay. Let's draw some fire. Let's draw some more fire. I'm going to avoid this because he gets a 10% bonus for being up on that hill. So we're going to try and punch a hole right in here. That's our plan. Hey, Natkinway, good to see you. I hope you're doing well today. Thanks for tuning in. Hope all is well in your world. Hey, thanks for the subscription. Uh, these are all useless. Let's move a little bit closer with this. See if we can finally take out that blasted recordless rifle. There we go. That makes me happy. That makes this a lot more attractive. We're going to utilize these heavy machine guns on these half tracks. That's too far away to be effective. Oh, look at that. Cool. <laughs> Those are all the new icons, everyone. What do you guys think? So if you're following along on Twitch, I do have... Uh, I loaded up some icons that are are unique to the channel, just for something fun and silly. I'm going to move these out of the way. Same with these. Let's move these a little closer to the fight, so they're more effective. Bring our tanks up. So those uh, that are Kelly's Heroes fans will recognize a couple of those for inspiration. Positive Vibes, for example. Or that's my saying, but the spin on it, which is good. Alright, so we know there's a line around here somewhere. I'm going to start advancing with my tanks. Oh, frick. We just got disrupted at least. So there were level 1 minefields out here. That's always encouraging. So obviously the fire truck signifies my own fire truck. Ah, oh, are you serious? That's a fire truck. And I lost that tank. Oh. At least Stipe will be happy that I didn't lose a helicopter. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's infantry. Oh, that's infantry too. Here I am leading with loaded jeeps. That's not very smart. Okay, let's just... Oh, no! What? 
Unload. Unload before I die. Okay then. And just like that, we found some bad guys. I didn't expect them to be way the heck out here. What is that? Ah, it's a PT-76. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Well then, that changes everything. Yeah, if it's a PT-76, that's definitely a recon force. I don't know if it's a battalion or if it's just a recon company. I don't know. The question is... Do I care? If it's PT-76, I don't really care. And if it's Egyptian, I don't remember if they had BTR-40s or motorcycles or what. So whatever, we're going to see what's ever there pretty soon. So that'll keep things interesting. I haven't shot at it yet, so if it's fixed, it'll stay fixed. All right, here, let's start dealing with this. Reduced it. Got rid of it. Perfect. Not cool. Shoot. Ah, there's that T-54 still. Way that. Let's see if we can kill it. Oh, there should only be one strength point. I do need a Brumbar for that bunker. You're totally right, John. Oh, that'd be awesome. Come on. All right, let's continue advancing. See if we can take out this gun. Finally, reduced it. So that likely has two guns. I don't remember how many this has, but we're getting closer. Oh, what's this? Full trucks. We will definitely be hitting those. And okay, on this side. This is not good. Can I see that? No, you see? This is how the dunes interfere with your line of sight. I can see just past the dunes, but I can't see beyond the dunes because they're blocking my line of sight. So that's kind of good to know. Same with these ones. These tanks here, this dune, side X, is blocked, blocking this. So I can see immediately behind it, but I can't see beyond it. Which is interesting. Oh. oh, sand. There's so much sand. Well, let's keep with our maneuverability and move the tanks north. Let's hit those recordless rifles if we can. Reduce it by one. Let's hit this anti-tank gun. Sand equals bad moving. You are absolutely right, John. Absolutely right. I want to get a little bit closer. Unload. Let's retreat with our half tracks so we don't lose them. And we're going to get a little bit closer to see. That's a pretty defended line. Maybe there's... I'm going to guess... Based on that... A battalion is sitting here, maybe. That's kind of what I'm guessing. I'm just going 
remove the vehicles that I'm not going to use off. We can use this though. I'm going to move the vehicles that I'm not going to use off the road. And get ready to start assaulting the position. I need an engineer more than anything. We can use this. That we don't need. Our tanks are coming. That's that. Okay, I think we're good. Save it, end it, bada boom. Oh, that was nice of them to give me some protection. Even better. And that's the thing with scripting, is that I can have it so that the AI actually uses the gear as it's supposed to be used, instead of, you know, providing me protection with its smoke, it, it'll do, you know, provide itself protection. This could hurt, because that's really close range. And it did hurt, we lost the tank. tank gun, so that's okay. Come on, positive vibes. That's nice of them, retreating for me. Yeah, so I don't know why they're doing that. They shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, that's what I'm doing there, Tim. I'm maneuvering the infantry up and around, hopefully. Reinforcements have arrived. Nine airstrikes remaining. Four units have uh, recovered out of five. Five headquarters unable to provide supply, one artillery unit unavailable, and two units low on ammo. They're going back to defend the exit hexes, or the objectives, or both. Yeah, I'm not sure what. We got lucky, we reduced that by two. Let's continue moving a little closer. Let's see if we can take out this recordless rifle. Reduced it. Reduced it again. And disrupted it. Field Marshal Petho. <laughs> hey, Tactician, good to see you. I hope you're doing well today. There we go. That's what we wanted to do. Right. Can we see that? No. Oh, there's an anti-tank gun there, too. Beautiful. Let's hit these. So this does give us... Uh, being behind the dunes gives us a little bit of protection, like being hauled down. 
but not very much. The problem is now we're in sand and that's just a pain to use. Again, I'm going to put my frontal armor because it's the, the strongest. It has a 38, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, we have more infantry. Let's bring them up. We have some more cordless rifles. What can they see? Oh, they can hit this anti-tank gun. Maybe. Let's try. No joy. But I am going to pull back because they're going to target my gun. My cordless rifle jeeps. Okay, here... We are going to continue to advance. Let's unload those guys. So we're moving up the hill just to get some eyes up on this ridge here. I don't know if the line continues or if it stops or what. I have no idea, but we're going to see. We are going to advance and check that out. Okay, I think that's all. Yeah, I need recon units. That's the problem. Is that they've died already. In this sector. I'm just waiting for some new recon units. And also engineers. I don't have any engineers here yet. Which is has me kind of concerned. Because there's blocks and stuff that I would like to remove. Still nothing. over here. Now these guys didn't do anything, so let's draw some fire. Oh, interesting. So that's fired twice. our tanks over here. Oh, there's something else up there too. A BDRM-1, I think. That's gonna die. Is that a 1? Yeah, that is a 1. BR BRDM-1 BRDM or BDRM? What is it? I don't remember. These guys found a minefield. Let's continue going up the wadi. Oh. Did we lose it? No, it just got disrupted. Sneaky buggers. They put a, a block in there, plus they put a minefield. At least we snuck through it, though, with not too many casualties, just a couple of disruptions, I think. All right, so now here we have the... Uh, the capabilities of trying to push through this line, so let's do that. What? Coreless rifle time. Take out this machine gun. I'll reduce it by one. Let's try this other one. Can I see it? Then let's move these infantry. For 500 meters, we shouldn't take any losses, but we will get a reduction. There's no. Oh, really? Holy crap, man. Alright, let's move these up over here. Let's do some firing. Joy. That's better. So both of those units are reduced. That's good. Let's 
just fire at them with our machine guns. Then our mortars. There, reduced it by one. So we're whittling down this line. It's going to take a little bit, but slowly but surely. That's good. They're both re disrupted and reduced. It'd be nice to have them reduced a little more before I decide to go in there, but we're on the right path. And let's soften that up one more time. Here we have our tanks. Reduced it. Interesting. Okay, so we do have our other vehicles. Infantry engineers? No. Oh, there's an engineer. Hallelujah. More engineers. Even better. Okay, so we finally have some engineers on the map. Let's see if we can be progressive. Importantly, we have these uh, engineer tanks that are coming. Do we have reinforcements? We do. Some more recovery vehicles. Maybe more engineer vehicles. Let's see. Ah, some patents. M60s. A lot of goodies there. Well, these meteors have 105s. That's good. Perfect. Okay. That's that. That's that. This is pretty much done as well. Alright. That's it. Bada boom. Thank you. Good smoke. Missed though. Oh no! Oh good. So that's a priority target. That's why they shot at that. A mortar. Didn't even see the minefields there. Thank goodness they're level ones, because if they were more, it'd be it'd be crappy. Jeez, those anti-tank guns. I think we're just gonna start pushing. The infantry has run away, so let's just go in and assault it. Take our losses. There's that tank back there still. Where is it? Ah, darn it. 
At least they just retreated. That's good. Minefield 3 equals chop liver. That's so true. You're right, John. It really is. It's even worse if you run into it double time. If you run into a level 3 minefield a double time, I think you can lose 5 strength points. I've seen that happen once. That It's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. Yeah, it wasn't. Ouch. It hurt. Ah, oh, reduced. The buggers. Yeah, they are abandoning these frontal positions. That makes my life a lot easier. What I find mostly interesting is that it's just the infantry that's running away. It isn't the heavy weapons. Oh, I lied. There was a machine gun now. Reinforcements have arrived. We have nine airstrikes remaining. We have three units out of four that have recovered morale. Four headquarters unable to provide supply. Two artillery units unavailable. And nine units low on ammo. Well, we reduced it by one. That's good. Reduced it by another one. That's also good. All right. Let's get a little bit closer. They're all reduced, so that re should reduce their effectiveness. So I should be able to get closer and not take too many casualties. Which I'm going to do with this guy as well. I can't assault because it's uphill. Oh no, it's a minefield! Oh, we got lucky though. Can I get in there? Yes. Perfect. That is what we wanted to do. Secure a line or part of the line. Now we're going to focus on this one here now. Perfect. Uh, let's utilize the heavy weapons. Thanks, John. Positive vibes, right? We're making some good progress. I would prefer if these guys just ran away so I can... There we go. That's what we want. Because then, again, I can just run into the trench if I don't die. Oh, we took a loss, but we managed to not get disrupted. We did take a morale hit. But I was able to advance into that thing, so that was perfect. That was just what we wanted to do here. Oh no! I forgot to go slow time. Ah, oh, they both took losses. Crap. So, there's a lesson right there. Even though we spotted there was a minefield there, I didn't go slow time through it, and I should have. That sucked. Suck factor 10. Yeah, I rushed. That's exactly what happened.
I got too excited. All right, let's uh, rake this trench, soften things up. I won't get any closer to it right now because it's it's still full strength and I don't think it's disrupted yet. So I'll just sit here for a little minute. A minute. Uh, let's continue going up the wadi. I think being in the wadi provides us some cover. Oh no, it doesn't. Does it? Oh, it provides concealment. That's what it does. And it has a decent TM. Which is not awesome, but it's not terrible. Okay, so. Found some bad guys. Let's kill the bad guys. PT-76. Light tank extraordinaire and it is now eliminated and we shall use the 105s on this BDRM or BRDM there we go so we eliminated that recon element what else do we have back here there's a BTR 50 that is also part of that recon element so let's kill it because if we look carefully it's loaded with infantry oh it got lucky now it didn't get lucky but it did get lucky because it went out of my line of sight head towards this trail. Let's move our tank up. That'll give us line of sight to wherever that thing went. Let's move our jeeps up. Circle the wagons. Let's take a look. We have our tanks, we have our infantry, we're coming up to this uh, dry stream bed, and we're still working towards, towards where our goal was, so we're doing okay. We did run into the recon element here, but we should be able to take it out. Oh, that's, oh, that's nothing. Perfect. And over here. Uh, I should be able to assault this. Yes, I can assault it, but nothing's going to happen. Uh, see, that's what I should have done, is I should have done that. Shot it, and then assaulted it. I'm not sure what those links are, so don't click them. Safety first. Here we go. Well, at least we've got the high ground. Let's see, can we push through here? Ah, frickin' minefield. good let's get in there okay so now we know there's a minefield here let's go slow time oh we still triggered it with slow time but we didn't get take any casualties so that's good but now we're in the line minefields here slow time 
And we still triggered it. Oh, man. Oh, minefield in there, too. Man, there's minefields everywhere. I'm going to bring these half-trucks up to help. I don't know if it's a level 3 minefield. It, it, it's at least a, a... Well, I don't know. Maybe a 2? I don't know. It's hard to say. If it was a 3 and we ran into it with the two tank platoons like that, we should have taken casualties. So I don't think it's a level 3. Maybe a level 2 because it got triggered so many times. But because we were going slow time with the other ones, we got lucky. Still don't have engineers on this side, anyways. Oh, there they are. They're coming. Here they are, right there. And a brigade headquarters. And some Shermans. Put the Shermans in the lead. We have ARVs. It's perfect. Up here, what do we have? Oh yeah, these M60s. Oh no, are those M48s? Yeah, they're M48s. I thought they were M60s. I was mistaken. that. We can now advance with our engineers. I'm going to leave one there. I'm going to maneuver one through the smoke. Oh, slow time. Let's fire at these things. really disrupted, but they're not dying. We do have an engineer coming, though. Goodness. Now there's a roadblock there that we need to deal with. Oh, those are so brutal. Uh, let's try and take out this gun. I don't know. Let's just slow time. Move closer. Slow time. Move closer. Slow time, move closer. We're just going to start bullying our way through here. Aha. Thanks for the heads up, John. Oh, can we occupy this? Yes. Perfect. Next turn, we should be able to uh, get up close and personal. These are all good. That's good. That's good. That's going to be useful. What do we want to hit? We want to hit this and that. The 
mortar is out of ammo. We have some goodies. Let's get these half tracks out of the way. And we'll so just ha so you know, these ARVs will work like this. So I will drive this ARV up to this wreck. Well, might as well use this wreck here because it's on the road. And I think it will clear, there's only one there, but I think it will clear, I I think it's two, maybe three at a time. So during the course of a turn, next turn, it'll re remove that wreck, and up to three, I think it's up to three wrecks, I don't remember exactly, but yeah. That's kind of handy, especially when you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. All right. That's that. We are done. Let's save it. End it. Oh, add our reinforcements. It's two, I thought. I don't remember if it's two or three. And I don't remember if it says so in the manual. Darn it. Still more tanks and more infantry. Man, this is going to be a big fight. But not so, not so big if they're all running away. What's this? More M48s. More meteors. More armored infantry. I like how we're spread out along the whole line. That's kind of good. You can't really flank on this side because there's no real road. You're, you're going to be stuck in the sand, so you're kind of screwed there. Now, if I add helicopters, that'd be a whole different story. But it's 67, so there's none of that. All right, end the turn. It's interesting they had a second line of defense there. I think it might be two, John. I think you're right. Those poor guys in that minefield. Too much of a rush. The nice thing about these scenarios is that the time flies. I can't believe it's already been an hour and 40 minutes almost. That's insane. It's like I just got started. Uh oh. That's not good. Uh, now I don't know if it hits on this side or this side, this vehicle here. So it could be a frontal shot or it could be a side shot. I'm not sure. Look at that. Level 2 minefields. Yay for slow time. Ah! Well, it's one hex away, so that's expected. Oh, we got lucky. Oh, it got disrupted. Let's see, next hit. What's it gonna do? Oh, nothing! Perfect. Oh, our engineer ran away. What? Damn, Israeli is... Oh, running away. So we are getting close to the uh, one kilometer distance for that tank down there, so we have to be careful. I don't think... In 67, the Egyptians had a lot of anti-tank weapons, so we're pretty safe if we're up against them. Unless they get us from the side, or rear. That's bad. But frontally, we should be we should be fine. Holy crap, look at all the minefields! Ah, what the heck was that? Someone shot us. Ah, oh, side shots. Anti-tank gun. Oh, we lost our mortar. Fire truck. Hmm. 
Nope, Sagers did not appear until 73. You are right. Although, there were other missiles in 67 that both sides used. They were just very rare. I think there were AT-2 and the Israelis had... What did they have? Oh, it was like an SS-10 or something. The Egyptians in 67, they had a basically a gas truck that had missile launchers in the back of it, which was super cool. Hey, good night, Ginger. Thanks for tuning in. Really good to see you. Hope you have a fantastic night and good rest of your week. Hope to see you on Sunday. going yet soon though all right we have reinforcements that have arrived we have nine airstrikes remaining we have four units that have recovered morale out of seven three headquarters unable to provide supply we have three artillery units unavailable four units low on ammo and we did clear some stuff and some wrecks so yeah we did clear that wreck which is perfect there we go got rid of that machine gun there's a machine gun in there, too. Come on. Positive vibes. Nope. Alright. So we should be through this. Let's do some shooting. They're in an improved position. They should still take some casualties. I hope. Oh, or not. Disperse them. Perfect. Let's see if we can continue that. Alright, let's occupy this. Uh, I'm going to slow time, because I don't know where the line is. Got, look at that, how lucky we got. Holy crap. Alright, let's start hitting this from this side. We got super lucky. Okay, let's see if we can target this and get it out of the get it out of the way. Perfect. And then we're gonna occupy. That improved position. And we have enough to shoot. Perfect. So let's shoot, not that, this. We're slowly rolling up the line. We'll continue advancing. Um, oh, look at that. Level 2 minefields. You buggers. That's slow time. And also add to that assault. Oh. Brutal. Okay. Oh no, minefield. I forgot. Oh, we got lucky. Oh, we finally got rid of that thing. Let's occupy it before <laughs> before something occupies it. There's that T-34. T Let's see if we can take it out. Oh, no. Okay, let's do some ranged fire. There we go. That's how you do it. Finally. these tanks up here. 
same with the engineer. That'll soak up the alt fire. In fact, it's an infantry platoon. We're pretty safe. Let's fire at this now. We'll hit this with artillery. Uh, let's go in here. Let's try one more assault onto that. Nope. One more. Holy, that sucks. Alright, on the bright side we have some Shermans. That'll clear this block. And we're going to push through this road. Hopefully get through this and I don't think there's going to be any more minefields or blocks through there. Yeah, this has been a bear. But it's been fun. So that's important. Alright, let's continue with our engineers. Bring them down to help out. So even if you stack engineers into the same hex, it's only going to remove one thing per turn. So there's no sense stacking. Just, uh... Just disperse them. There's something there. There's a roadblock there or something. That's why I can't move in there. That makes sense. Let's grab our reinforcements. So these patents are actually better for being out in the desert because they will move a little further where the meteors are best on the roads. But since I'm now pushing through this line, I don't think I'm going to have to care about it. Ah, I did that wrong. Oops, a daisies. Alright, over here. Let's bring these guys up. See if we can push through here. Ah, I can't assault over the, the dunes. Again, not worried about just the infantry alone. We're going to occupy some safe positions. engineers here yet? No. Not yet. They're coming, but not yet. Let's see if we can take out some of these things. No joy. Where are our trusty engineers? There's one right there. Perfect. Up here. Let's hit that trench. That seems to be open. Fire at this improved position and clear it. And then we'll split up our forces here. Now he's fired twice, so we can move closer. Oh, freaking. There's a fire truck. Use the fire truck symbol because that's what that was. Oh, look at that. We got lucky. Occupy the trench. They're out in the open. They've likely taken some casualties. So let's utilize this and see if we can overrun that. Didn't overrun it, but we caused casualties. How many did we cause? One, and it got disrupted. And I don't think I have enough action points to do it again. I do not. So I think we've broken through. 
the first line of defense. Here's the shortest crossing route, so that's where I'm going to get back on the road. Once I start rolling this up, I don't think I have to worry about... I'm not going to go any further or any deeper out here because it, I'll just get bogged down in the sand. That makes zero sense. But I will flank, uh, secure this flank up here along this road so we can push through. Now that I have finally an engineer, we can clean up some of this. It'll make advancing much faster. Unfortunately, this guy's still screwed. Yeah, I can't assault that. That's too bad. But I can shoot at it. So they got reduced, ran away. Let's use our tanks. Oh, there's a recoilless rifle there. So that's more of a threat than most things. Oh, I can't see that. Sneaky buggers. Oh, there's a anti-tank gun. I forgot about that. Alright, do we have artillery over here? We do, but it's out of ammo. Uh, let's swing these tanks up and around because that way they don't get bogged down in here. We still need the engineers up there. Okay, I think we're good. Over here, we are going to eliminate this. like magic and then continue on the flank I think we're safe now I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give you guys back your Jeeps so you have to make sure that you're assigning the right ones to the right ones in the sense of strength points so if I tried to load a four armored infantry into this three Jeep, it wouldn't work because it doesn't have enough uh, capabilities of carrying that. So that's something to keep in mind. So four, 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 three, three. So larger vehicles, on the other hand, they can carry more infantry. So three trucks will carry a six strength point of infantry. <laughs> Use car lot cheap prices for sure oh yes uh what are we going to do with these tanks uh, do you think we should just go up the water or should we start cutting across i'm kind of tempted to just keep going up the water to see what's here what do you think this wadi will take us all the way up to this position here this el quar wadi let's do it thanks john people. Sorry for that. And I think we're good. So let's save it, end it, see what happens. Oh, more reinforcements. Ah, so many units. Loving it. We are our Spartans. We go up the wadi. That is true. Oh, we got lucky. Thank you, Recordless Rifle. This 
this is why we occupy the improved positions, because that machine gun, if we were out in the open, would have likely caused us damage. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's another gun back there. shooting. What's that? Another anti-tank gun. Holy. Look at all these trucks that we're going to assault. <laughs> Anti-aircraft gun, mortars. That's the other thing. A human opponent would be using its artillery and, and breaking up my tank attacks. The artillery in my... oh wow. It, the artillery in my game against Javi is the only thing that's saving me from being totally overrun by... by tanks. is a good player. He's he's pretty quick too. He plays you know a turn maybe every two days. I have another game with uh, with Lindsay that we're playing the French. Oh, it's fun. It's really fun. I like playing the French. And trying to push off the assaults from all the Viet Minh. Holy, it's just rough. I feel like you never have enough in order to deal with that. But it's fun. And then the other, I have another game going on with Bill. Um, as well as Robert. I have a game going on with Robert. Mid the pass. This is just getting interesting. We're, he has Israeli parachutists. And it's 56, I think. It'll be rough. It'll be a rough go. Uh, reinforcements have arrived. Nine airstrikes remaining. Oh, the, the game that I have with Bill is uh, the tournament scenarios. Uh, I'm playing as the Chinese. He is playing as the Marines. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I just feel like running away because I know how strong my Chinese are. Uh, nine airstrikes remaining. We have two units out of five that have recovered morale. Four headquarters unable to provide supply. Two artillery units unavailable. Six units low on ammo. And we did clear a block or a mine. You finally got your units where you need them. Yeah, that's... Ah, <laughs> uh, it's going to suck because I'm just getting organized. And it's like, oh no, he's here already. Ah, uh, thanks, infantryman. I appreciate that. And unlike... Unlike your units, my units vary in, in quality, so some are okay, <laughs> the other ones are, 
Uh, if you blow on them, they'll just run away. Uh, in Vietnam, yeah. So that, that Chinese versus the uh, U.S. Marines is in Vietnam. It's the, the tournament scenario. It's at the very bottom of the list. But they're, it, I think they're going to be kind of cool to play. I hope you're going to find them entertaining because they kind of tell a story, right? Hypothetical story, obviously. Completely fictional, but a lot of fun. Should be interesting. Should be causing both Bill and I to lose our hair for sure. All right, you know what? It's a couple hours. We're going to save it there. And we will continue this next week. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you're watching this on YouTube, consider giving it a like and subscribe. That always does help and is appreciated. Especially if you've made it this far. That's amazing. Uh, I'll be back on Wednesday. No, sorry. It is Wednesday. I'll be back on Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific. A uh, couple hours. We will be going back into Vietnam. Returning to Hue. And see how that goes. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks to Infantryman, to John, to Natkinway, to Ginger, to Ryzine, to Tim. Thanks all for tuning in. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for all the feedback. Always find that enjoyable to have a chat with you all. All right. On that note, take care, smile always, and talk to you soon.